markets this week have been rattled amid uncertainty over a U.S.-China trade agreement. The latest talks between the world's two largest economies have ended without a deal. Latest round of tariffs will impact thousands of Chinese imports, including handbags, electronics, clothing, furniture, luggage, baseball mitts. Lifts goes on and on. So what does this mean for you? Walser Wealth Management President, Tax Attorney Rebecca Walser joins us now. Rebecca, nice to see you. Uh, some estimates say average family gets hit by about $800 worth of tariffs. Uh, another word for tariffs is a tax. Uh, can the American people afford that right now? You know, Leland, I don't think that anyone feels like it, they can afford an additional $800, even though the economy is doing very well. Yeah. The problem is we have to look at the long term. And so, yeah, short term it will be painful, but longer term it's in the best interest, in my opinion. When you say longer term, uh, that assumes that the Chinese eventually cave. Uh, do you know something we don't? <laughs> Only that we absolutely must get a deal with China. The uh, Made in China 2025 program is literally yeah. uh, sort of the end of the American consumer using Chinese goods as we know it at a cheap rate. And so we have to get a trade deal that stops that in its tracks, at least as it relates to America. And yeah. if we don't, we're in a deep world of hurt for surely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and th that, that assumes that the Chinese live up to any deal they make, which uh, they've not exactly had a, a great track record on. <laughs> uh, this tweet from the president this morning, such an easy way to avoid tariffs, make or produce your goods and products in the good old USA. It's very simple. I would suspect the supply chain managers at a number of companies might disagree with that. Yeah, I would agree. I, you know, what happened on the 80s, really 80s and 90s, is we over we shipped our manufacturing jobs overseas for cheaper labor and less, you know, labor regulations and employment restrictions and, and, and you know, protections. And we've enjoyed the cheap Chinese goods all that time, but now they're sort of using that to exploit America, right. has been going on. And so that's what we're talking about is this long-term strategy of, yeah, if we could bring those jobs back and people could still get their cheap goods, then, we, then that, that would be the ultimate solution. But obviously, they're more expensive yeah, to produce things seems... in, in America. R yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It would be great if, if you could have your cake and eat it, too. Uh, the right. Dow this week uh, responded here to these talks. They did not like that uh, up on Wall Street. You look at the Dow down significantly, and especially during the times there were rumors that uh, there was going to be no deal at all and the talks weren't continuing, the, the Dow really crashed. Uh, the question is this. You've got this three-week period now from when the tariffs were announced to really when they start hitting uh, companies' bottom lines or midlines, if you will. Uh, how long do you think Wall Street gives this before having to bake in tariffs and then the second round of higher tariffs uh, into their earnings estimates and therefore into everybody's 401ks? It's not going to be even a quarter, Leland. It will, will, will start to affect people within less than you know four months, so it will be even less than a quarter. And certainly, Americans might it might take a little bit of time for Americans to feel it in the wallets because um, it does get passed down. It's kind of a cyclical getting passed down by the business, but it's going to affect it. And th the bigger issue question is if we don't get a deal, Leland, we're looking at a 25 percent or greater stock market problem. So we have baked in this this uh, deal getting it's, done. It, to, it seems like the market's right now predicting that things are going to work out okay in some way or another, thinking the president really isn't going to hold that hard of a line with the Chinese. The question comes, if there's a miscalculation between the president and the Chinese, you run the risk, as you said, of more than 25% uh, of a uh, bear market. What do you, are people starting to hedge that yet and your clients starting to hedge it? No, I think that we, the market was upset this week. Obviously, this was a surprise. The fact that the Chinese basically redlined almost the entire agreement at the last 11th hour was a surprise, and the market reacted as surprise because it, it was a surprise. But uh, we still do not believe that the deal is not going to get done after all, you know over a year of negotiations. It's it's been since last year, 10 months. So you know the market is still optimistic, believe it or not. Even though we had hmm. this bad week, they were surprised, but yet still optimistic. It's still some baked in. I'm telling you, we are we are have. A, if we were to get the news today that there's no deal or there will never be a deal, um, it would be a, a massive um, sell-off, and, and you mm. would have some a lot. You'd have a massive problem with the market, and, and we would have to figure out a new way forward. You know, yeah. because um, well, it, it would be ugly. No, noteworthy that the uh, Chinese seemed a little bit contrite. Just. A little bit uh, over the past couple of days. Rebecca <laughs> Walser with us uh, yeah. today. Thanks so much. We're good to have. Glad to have you. Thank you, Leland. All right.